Hollywood film industry. The committee is seeking to determine if Red Party members have reached the screen with subversive propaganda. To the mogul's surprise, powerful men in Washington saw Hollywood's patriotism as nothing more than thinly disguised communism. Now at the height of their success, the Hollywood Jews watched their dream fall apart. While economic factors played a role in their demise, it was the House Un-American Activities Committee, HUAC, which really brought them down. This committee, under its mandate from the House of Representatives, has the responsibility of exposing and spotlighting subversive elements wherever they may exist. That communists have made such an attempt in Hollywood and with considerable success is already evident. With the advent of the Cold War, HUAC began persecuting Hollywood for the populist and pro-Soviet films the Roosevelt administration encouraged Hollywood to make during the Second World War. Did you cook this dinner? I did. But you're a pianist. How can you let her do such work? How can I let her? The question is, how can I stop her? <laughs> I would not be happy here on the farm if I did not do my share of the work. No, but is it necessary that you drive a tractor? It is a privilege to drive the tractor. The committee is determined that the hearing shall be fair and impartial. We have subpoenaed witnesses representing both sides of the question. All we are after are the facts. I should like to see what you have. Oh, First you came the mostly Jewish Hollywood talent who stood up to Huack. Are you a member of the Communist Party? Next, you are going to ask what my religious beliefs are, and you are going to insist before various members of the industry that since you don't like my religious beliefs, I should not work in that industry. There became an identification in people's minds with the things that went together, intellectuals, Jews, Russians, communists. If you look back at any of the depictions of what communists were, all of these things kind of get merged together in the, in the public imagination. The chairman of the committee, at the time that it initiated its investigation of Hollywood, was a vicious anti-Semite from Mississippi by the name of John Rankin. And Rankin said on the floor of Congress, I'm just going to read up an excerpt from, from a speech he gave. He said, communism is the most dangerous influence in the world today. I am talking about the communism of Leon Trotsky, of course he mentions a Jew, that is based upon hatred for Christianity. You know that communism. Remember that communism and Christianity can never live in the same atmosphere. Communism is older than Christianity. This is a revision of history since Karl Marx, to most people's knowledge, is the, is the one who created communism. But this communism, which is clearly a euphemism for Judaism, is older than Christianity. It is the curse of the ages. It hounded and persecuted the Savior during his earthly ministry, inspired his crucifixion, derided him in his dying agony, and then gambled for his garments at the foot of the cross. But we are today in a deadly conflict between those two ideologies. And there can be no compromise Mr. Rankin, in this country. I hope that you're not impugning in any way the American activities of the motion picture employers in Hollywood. I am, I, some, think are, I am some of them, I'll Well, you. I want to tell you right now that there is no group of more American people in the country than are those in Hollywood. Well, I want yeah. to tell you some of the things they're doing. Well, I know, I know some of the things they're doing, and I know some of the things they're doing that probably you don't know. But I can tell you now, you need a house cleaning. And they need it very badly. The question of communism is in no way related to this inquiry, which is an attempt to get control of the screen and to invade the basic rights of American Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. It's not an issue denied to any committee of this sort to invade the rights and privileges and liberties of American citizens, whether they be Protestant or Methodist or Jewish or Catholic, Mr. whether Lord. they be All right. or my beliefs, my affiliations, and everything else to do with the American public, and they will know where I stand, as they do from what I have written. Stand away from the stand. Have you ever been a member of the 
Your purpose, 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 purpose is to use this to disrupt the motion picture industry, to invade the right not only of me, but of the producers to their thoughts, to their opinions. No, 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 and this no, I will no, not permit. No, 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 no. The President of the United States said that anti communism was American policy. And that scared the shit out of them. Because the last thing they wanted to be called was un American. Having flirted with the idea of being Americans for so long, they began to believe that possibly they were. I'm just hopeful, like I told you, Mr. Smith, in California, that perhaps out of this hearing, our Congress. Now came the moguls, who were out to prove their American patriotism. Question, give us a policy how to handle American citizens who don't deserve to be, if they are communists, to get them out of our place. The ideology term, ideological terms rather, ter termites, have burrowed into many American industries, organizations and societies. Wherever they may be, I say, let us dig them out and get rid of them. My brothers and I will be happy to subscribe generously to a pest removal fund. We are willing to establish such a fund to ship to Russia the people who don't like our American system of government and prefer the communistic system to ours. Then you admit that there are or were communists or communist sympathizers in your own industry. I, wouldn't, I don't know if they're communist sympathizers. I know they're an American in their method. In your studio, you mean? In our studio, I think. Well, how do you, you mean un-American because they are communists or un-American because they're fascists? No, un-American because they endeavor to put certain things into scripts that, in my personal opinion, is un-American and I, uh, it's my business to see that it doesn't get in and my, if it and eventually does get it creep in, I cut it out. Well, well there's, there's very little difference on whether a person is a communist or a fascist so long as he's un-American, isn't that true? I, I am not qualified to answer but that. But you admit, though, there are some people in your studio that are in America. Yes, I admit that. The way the moguls buckled was they're, 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 the Cossacks are coming again. They were unsure of their status. A lot more unsure, say, than the next generation of who were writers, say, or directors or actors, you know, who, who were born in America, and as I was, and uh, had no no confusion at all about being Americans. We were Americans and felt we had all the rights of Americans and uh, would fight for them when we could. I am against, uh, I, am, uh, I speak, I am for everything that you said. Well, uh, so you agree the, with that I statement? Agree. I agree wholeheartedly and I... The statement was a little long. And it I, was a I very good statement. Your... It's a statement of a real American. To appease UAC, the Mughals instituted a blacklist of studio talent. Years before, they had fled European anti-Semitism. But now in America, they became collaborators, helping anti-Semites rid Hollywood of Jewish intellectuals. In effect, they had surrendered control of the industry. If you look at the main factors in what caused the Mughals' decline, 